This is a CBS 6 special presentation for Keeps, families for all Virginia's teens. What I've always wanted to do, I wanted to be on TV and play for professional soccer and go across the country to like Germany or something like that to um, play. And also for my future, um, my goal is to go to college at least two years. But I haven't really figured out what I want to um, do in college for my career after soccer. Um, I really want to be a nurse. This shit, like as soon as I go to college, I really want to be a nurse. I want to be an RN. I try to just do as best as I can no matter where I go because I know my goal is to go to college. Every year, hundreds of young people leave Virginia's foster care system to begin their journey as independent adults. Unlike other young adults with strong family support, many former foster children are alone as they face the challenges of jobs, housing, and personal relationships. Many overcome the problems they encounter and lead lives as healthy and productive members of our communities. Others do not fare as well. Without family support, they find their way onto welfare roles, into homeless shelters, or sometimes into mental health and correctional institutions. I became involved with the foster care system in my role as a juvenile court judge here in the city. And uh, it, I really had a wonderful opportunity to get to know some of the young people and families involved in that system. They're just a remarkable bunch of young people striving against all odds, really, to be of uh, successful adults and the families who are caring for them and the social workers really you see some extraordinary work and it um, uh, came to be very meaningful to me to be involved with it. For some foster care allows for unexpected opportunities and provides a crucial opportunity to be part of a loving supportive family. What makes um, my foster mother special is that she has an open heart and she's willing to accept anybody regardless of who their background is, how their personality is, and whatever. She'll just accept them. And she's, she takes time off to help them and cope with their problems and give feedback to what they should, how they should live um, or make a better person of themselves. Uh, the challenges, yeah, they make a big impression on me. They're fun to be around, they're fun to hang out with. You can share your problems with them. You can just have fun with them. We go out, we sit down, watch movies together. We um, cook and stuff like that. Since I was between seven and 10, I would say about nine or eight, um, I've been in foster care. Um, so um, I've been in about eight homes for foster care. Um, I've learned a lot in foster care. Um, so to me, it's kind of a really big privilege um, for me to be in foster care. I'm kind of taking it, trying to take um, foster care in a positive way because I've learned a lot and I have thought about if I wasn't in foster care, I probably wouldn't have known or meet any people very special in my life um, if I was not in foster care. So it's a really big privilege for me. Yet typically foster homes are temporary arrangements. Establishing permanent connections is the driving force behind Virginia First Lady Ann Holton's program, the Four Keeps Initiative. Four Keeps is the initiative that I'm spearheading to help Virginia improve our uh, efforts to find and strengthen permanent families for all Virginia's young people, including those in foster care and those at risk of entering the foster care system. The Four Keeps Initiative has three main goals. First, strengthen the voices of youth in foster care and the voices of foster parents. Secondly, find permanent families and permanent family connections for older children in foster care or at risk of coming into care. And third, to champion efforts to improve family and community supports for all children. The First Lady recently traveled across Virginia on a listening tour to hear foster parents, foster youth, and professionals serving foster families share their thoughts on how the foster care system is working. It was just so exciting to have so many of these young people come and say, we want help paying for college. We want help being able to get a car so we can get to our job. We, want, uh, we do want to connect up with our families, our siblings, our brothers and sisters that we've lost touch with, our grandparents. Um, the uh, foster parents who came forward, they were asking for help and support. And we want to be able to be uh, better supports to these young people, but we need help when we're doing it. We need better um, uh, crisis supports. We need better 
um, uh, resources for when we do run into trouble. And it, it was just so exciting to meet people who are really doing the Lord's work in so many different ways and doing it with such passion. I'm going into the ninth year of foster care. And when I say that this is a difficult job, it's not an impossible job, but it's a difficult job. I think that I was born to do this at this place and time because I can remember being concerned about orphans all the way back to Shirley Temple. And I was a little kid. It has always been in me. It was always um, on the, in the back of my mind. And when I got in my 40s, after I had I had raised my own children, and my, most of my children were grown or approaching adulthood, then it became time. Currently, there are more than 8,100 children in foster care in Virginia. While they range in age from infancy through 22, more than half of the youth in foster care are over the age of 12. And while they represent various racial and ethnic backgrounds, more than a third of Virginia's young people in foster care have the goal of returning home, but thousands of them aren't able to. Those sobering numbers connected with real faces, real children, demand that progress be made in establishing permanent family connections for these children. That's one of the benefits of living with Amy. We get to see both mom and dad. Um, if we live with either one of them, we might not be able to see the other as much. In fact, probably definitely wouldn't. Foster care is taking care of someone else's children as your own at a time when they're unable to do so. That's my simple definition of it. So it's doing everything a parent would do, and even more because of some of the things you have to deal with um, that a parent would do. Trying to be the best mom you can to somebody who you didn't give birth to, but who you come to love and take care of, so. There's a lot of people coming in and out of my life right now, and hopefully it's for the best part, so I can try to understand where they come from more and just to try to build better relationships with them. When these young people um, uh, leave foster care, if they leave as successful adults with permanent family connections to help support them as they go forward, then they're going to be contributing to our economy. They're going to be positive influences in the community. If we leave them to flounder, as we often do today, they are going to be a drag on the system through welfare, through incarceration, through homelessness. Uh, so we really have an opportunity to um, uh, benefit the whole community directly and indirectly by doing better for these young people. I would just like to see more people in there to, so that they ain't out here on the streets getting in trouble with the gang related and stuff like that so they can try to get the help that they need. There are different environments, treatment facilities, life facilities, group homes, and foster care. Foster care is a totally separate environment. It's just like being in a regular house no locked doors, you even get a key. No locked doors, it's more trust, less, I say less drama, less headache. Well, people should be involved because children in foster care is not just a local Department of Social Services concern. It is anybody's, anybody who has an investment in children and in their community uh, and who want to see youth successful and to become productive adults. It's everybody's concern. In most cases, children in foster care are there due to neglect in their biological families, not because of violence or crime on their part. The ultimate goal of foster care is to return these young people to their families. When that's not possible, other options are explored. People stereotype foster kids as bad kids because I've gone to my foster sisters family, they've been like, oh, what'd you do to get put in foster care? And what people don't realize is that it's not usually the kids who do something bad, it's usually the parents or whoever's taking care of them. And you may get bad kids out of the situation, but most of the time it was because the kids weren't taken care of, and now they're so hardened to people or society. But in most cases, they didn't go to foster care because of something they did, it was their caretakers. Coming up, we'll hear from youth in foster care on how they're able to prepare and face what's ahead. For information on how you can make the difference, log on to www.4keepsvirginia.org.
Virginia's future depends on supporting the young people who will shape tomorrow's communities. We learn more now in their own words. The system has worked really well for me. I mean, everyone's been a great help and support and found what was best for me and gave me my input in it. I've been in foster care for 20 years now, which it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot to actually be able to participate in some of the programs because I've been able to see the inside of things from being the foster care youth and needing this, needing that, and things of that nature. And at first, I didn't know a lot about of all of the um, opportunities and the benefits of being a foster care youth. It's, it's different because I've never actually been in a two-parent household. At the time, I thought it was wrong and bad. But then later on, I looked and saw the positive in it and saw the opportunities that came out and to go into the facility and into foster care. So now I have a whole door open to me. Yeah. I have a lot of networking and support now that I'm in foster care. And you're always around all those adults who can tell you, like give you advice or help you. Like when I was applying to college, like I needed a lot of help, I didn't know what I was doing. It's been fascinating to hear how many people speak up at a, a meeting of college presidents across the state. One person spoke up and said, I had a foster brother growing up, and he's, uh, he's the best member of our family now, my mom thinks, because he's the one who calls home every day to check on her. I agree. I, I am, I was, and at times I still am a handful, uh -huh. more than a handful, uh -huh. for what happened that caused me to be put, I call it the system, I, that's just me, I just call it the system. I was a handful, and before I didn't want to admit it, but now I'll just sit here, I'll be a man about it. I was a handful. Everyone says I have the potential to be, but up until the past two years ago, honestly, I wasn't so sure. At least I have people there that care about me, and they say if I leave then, I would like turn back to the regular person that I used to be. And I'm trying to um, be the best that I could be, like get through this so that I won't have to think back on the past and remember all the, the bad things, but think about the good things. Some good things that have helped me in the system is, like I said, meeting new people and find out what they like to do. And just basically trying to have a good time and complete whatever you need to complete and just look for new options because there should be always opportunities that would op open. Every time in our house, she's like, this house is always open to you. And you know then, even if you go away to college, you can come back and visit, and I want you to stay here and all. Coming up, we'll find out who is making a difference in the lives of children in foster care. Every day, people are making Virginia a better place for our young people. Log on to www.4keepsvirginia.org to find out how you can too. The decision to become a foster parent comes naturally for many and often proves rewarding in many more ways than first imagined. God bless anybody who's willing to adopt, uh, but uh, I think parents who are willing to adopt need to be careful that they don't put unmet needs in their life upon the child, thinking that, oh, we're going to bring this child in our home to meet one of our needs. Uh, because the child needs to be first, and, and we need to make sure that we're doing our best, not that we put aside our wants and desires, but we need to make sure that the desires for that, that child needs are getting met first and foremost, and we don't put any more on them, uh, unexpected or um, you know, things, you know, we don't put on them anything that they don't need, uh, unexpected expectations on them. Good foster home is somebody who would care about you, uh, who would do things, who would want you and accept you the way you are and not the way they want you to be, and who would just take you in for any, as, your, as their own child. When my oldest foster son, who is now 20 years old, and he had so many issues when he came to us, to see that boy uh, prosper and, and get better and I remember when he was graduating from high school, uh, 
not this past year, but the year before this one, is 2007 he graduated, 2006. I told him that day, I said, if you never ever accomplish another thing in your life, you are a champion. Because from where that boy came from, and for him to be able to get through school, to get back into regular education, to have not been institutionalized, and to graduate with a standard diploma, and now he's in a trade school, that, I mean, that's, that's rewarding. Establishing permanent connections allows these young people to grow and focus on pursuing their futures. Well, I want to be in fashion design. Uh, I want to own my own business someday. And then I might do fashion design and culinary because I like to cook also. So I might do a variety of both. And, but right now I'm just taking the basics, uh, taking it slow right now. I feel very determined and like no matter where life will take me, I feel like I'll be able to take care of myself. As I get older, I'm definitely making my own decisions. I'm turning 17 tomorrow, and I have my senior year of high school, and then I'm off to college, and I'm 18, and like she definitely wants to know what colleges I want to go to. She wants to know what kind of career I want. She wants to know what classes I want to take. She wants to know what I want to do for my senior year, where I want to go, like just other things that are just really simple that she asks me what I want to do. And that means a lot to know that I have more control over what's going to happen to me. I decided to stay in care because they're going to pay for me to go to college, for you know, to go to a community college. So I'm going to you know, take advantage of that, get that a uh, couple years out of the way, and then hopefully transfer to a um, you know university. I plan on living still somewhere in Virginia. I'm not sure where. Just somewhere in a nice little I guess, townhouse or apartment or something I can afford. Um, hopefully I'm working in chemistry, maybe pharmaceuticals, making medicines and stuff. That's what I plan on doing, or learning how to do that anyways, and hopefully I have my life pretty set and ready to go. More recent ones were, I kind of want to be a teacher. I think it'd be fun to give students a school they can enjoy, really enjoy, however possible that is. Anyway. Um, I got like three different ideas. Um, one, I want to be a graphic designer. I absolutely love it. Um, I want to be a lawyer. Um, I like arguing. And uh, people that work at the group home were like, you got a lawyer written all over your face. you got to be a lawyer. And I was like, well, we'll see. Like, I don't want to go to school that long, so. Well, I just hope I get a good scholarship and go to a good school, get a better education so I can fulfill my dreams. Successful futures depend on these young people learning the skills they need for independent living. Independent living is, is probably the most critical issue that we're facing because so many of these kids end up growing up uh, inadequately educated, inadequately prepared, for, for adult life. It's pretty much like they're on your, that you're on your own. You don't have the teaching parent environment. I'm hoping that I'll get to an IL apartment. It's still, I'll still have staff. Um, I won't have necessarily teaching parents. I'm very lucky to have teaching parents. But um, I'll still have somebody looking over me, but I'll be more on my own. I'll be more making my own decisions and having like more of my own thoughts about stuff and how I'm going to handle things like paying the bills. I still have to pay rent. and. I still have to pay for some food and like getting myself to school and get myself from school is definitely like a reality check because if I'm not ready for that then I need to tell my social worker that and it's a good like practice start. Those young people when they uh, leave without family find um, as all of our young people do that it's a tough thing to be in the world and on your own at age 18 or 19 trying to buy your own car trying to get yourself through school, trying to hold down a job, rent an apartment. Uh, studies have shown what we all know in our common sense that, that extended fa family and extended family continue to be a support in, in most families to young people well into their 20s and really throughout your life. And these young people who leave foster care without it uh, don't fare well. It's extremely important to get these young people permanent family connections. We all need it. And those permanent connections should follow these young people into their adult lives. And these kids deserve a home. They deserve to feel safe. They deserve to be loved. And 
they deserve a family connection. They deserve someone to call when they're 23, 24 years old. They deserve a place to go home for Thanksgiving and call their home and feel safe. When people learn about these young people and their circumstances, they respond very warmly. Everybody wants to know how they can help. Uh, everybody agrees that we can and should do better by these young people. There are so many families out there that can do it. Um, I, I think most families, they have these fears that are unfounded in a lot of instances. There are so many families out there that have the resources to do it. And, and you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that worry, well, financially, it'd be kind of hard. But there's support out there. Um, anybody who has a home that, uh, where love rules, that, you know, that they're willing to work. I mean, it, it does take work that they're willing to grow because they're going to have to, it's going to be hard. Um, but Cali Day, there's so many families out there that could do this. Um, and even those that uh, aren't sure, I think they should at least check it out. A lot of these young people have all the problems you would think that they might have, but a remarkable number of them really don't, are, really, are extremely resilient and uh, ready to respond uh, to love and structure and support from a, from a real family that they've never had. Yeah, they come with behaviors, but if you just treat them like your own children, you know, just take the time, give them love and understand them, they'll work out. Another challenge is finding foster families. It is very difficult to find foster families that will take teenagers. Everybody's been a teenager, so you know how it goes. You know, you're going to act up, you're going to do little foolish things, you're going to try stuff, you're going to see what's this, see what's that. And people get intimidated when they see a teenager in foster care or a kid who hasn't had a family. They think he's rough and his, his past is too much for him or they can't handle him because he might, do, he might get mad or he, he has problems, he, something's wrong with him. Pe people judge people before they get to know them. Um, the main thing for me is I would want a foster family for every child who comes in. We do not have enough foster families, uh, so there are several of our kids who I think could be better served in a foster home rather than a group home setting, but don't have that opportunity because we don't have enough available homes. How can you help? Consider becoming a foster or adoptive parent. For more information, call 1-800-DO-ADOPT. Contact your local or state Department of Social Services or check out www.4keepsvirginia.org. Foster children also need the interest and concern of everyone in the community. Encourage your government and community leaders to work together to meet the needs of foster and adoptive children throughout Virginia. Be a supportive friend to adoptive or foster families in your community. Volunteer as a court-appointed special advocate to a foster child. Become a temporary respite care provider for foster families. For other ideas for how to help, Check the Four Keeps website at www.fourkeepsvirginia.org.